Before going into the quadruple review, I would like to thank a lot of people actually. Mr. Novan and Mr. Noble for lending me the Zhen Wu Heyday and MP143 Salt. Mr. Harmoko for lending me the RT T10 and to CSI Zone for providing the Tin Hi-Fi Dudu. As per usual, this review is 100% my thoughts and opinion on the products mentioned. It is a pity that I cannot get my hands on the MP145 for this review, as I think a lot of people actually said that it is one of the best I am at that price range. But I digress. As previously mentioned, this time around, I will be sharing and comparing the plethora of IEMs with planar magnetic drivers, ranging from the cheapest to the more expensive ones. The cheapest out of the bunch is perhaps the RT Titan, and the most expensive I got is the Zhe Tianwu Heyday. One of them is definitely worth the try. With that, let's start with the unboxing experience. The RTT10 is the first to be unboxed. Having a white sleeve and a slightly grayish inner box, the RTT10 is well presented and rather simplistic in the unboxing part. Inside, there are two layers of things. The first layer houses the IEMs, and the next houses the case, inside of which includes a rather familiar looking cable and two types of ear tips. The cable is perhaps a similar cable to the DZ4 from Lashure I covered a while ago. With that concludes the unboxing of the RDD10. Next up is the Thin Hi-Fi Dudu. In case you haven't watched my video on them, I did review this a while back, and I think I should re-review them as I finally got to know the competition a little bit more and can actually do a comparison between them. The Thin Hi-Fi Dudu perhaps has the weirdest unboxing out of the four, as the box construction is rather different from the rest. The box has a small lid on top like a card, while the other has a more common slide-off design. Inside, there are two partitions, the one holding the IEMs and the other houses the cable and three types of ear tips. That is it. No case included with the doo-doo. Moving up a little bit, we have the MP143 Salt. This one is a special edition as it has the whale pin included with them. Opening them up, the unboxing experience is rather similar to a lot of IEMs in the market. However, what separates this one from the rest is the fact that there is basically no foam in the packaging and the cardboard they use has the matte finish. Perhaps it makes them way more recyclable, I digress. Inside the box, there are again two layers of packaging. The one houses the IEMs and the other houses the pouch. Perhaps I'm rather annoyed with the pouch included, but coming from the Tin Hi-Fi Dudu, something to store your IEMs is definitely welcome. And with that, concludes the unboxing experience of the Hidis MP143. Last but definitely not least, perhaps the biggest box I have came across so far, as it is definitely large enough to be displayed. The Tangzu Zhe Tianwu Heidei perhaps has the most impressive unboxing feel out of all of them, as the product is placed really well inside of box. There are two partitions that separates the case and the IMs themselves. Not to forget, underneath the IEMs, there are a bunch of ear tips included and named too. Moving on, the next part is the case. The case is rather big. Opening them up reveals the Hakuge modular cable, which includes a 3.5, 4.4, and 2.5mm jack. Planar magnetic drivers tend to benefit with larger size, so naturally, the sizes of planar IEMs tend to be a little bit bigger compared to their dynamics or hybrid friends. Out of the four I have here, the one that looks the largest is perhaps the MP143. Next is the Zetian Wu Heidei, then the Dudu, and the last, but still not quite least, the Titan. In regard of comforts, I find the Zetian Wu Heidei to be the most comfortable. The Tin Hi-Fi Dudu might have a slightly too short of a nozzle. MP143 is quite large and can be quite a hassle to fit in. The T10, while they are rather small, the shape of them is somewhat a little bit finicky to fit inside my ears. As for the design, I think I like the Zetian Wu Heidei design way too much. 
it makes sense because they are technically the most expensive out of the four. Followed by the MP143 at second place. I honestly quite like the dual tail design. Placing third is perhaps the RTT10. They look quite unique. And at the last place is the Tin Hi-Fi Dudu. Perhaps it is rather out of the blue, but when I plug the MP143 to the iFi Gryphon and then to my PC, it seems like the MP143 seems to have a slight buzzing sound. Not quite sure if it is the grounding issue on my end, or perhaps it is the MP143 is particularly sensitive to grounding issues. Because when I touch the Gryphon's housing, the buzzing noise is gone. The Tin Hi Fi Dudu does not do that, neither does the Zhen Wu or the T10. The problem seems to only appear when I am on my desk, but I digress. Speaking about the Gryphon, it will be my source for this review. Huge shout out to iFi for lending me a unit in for review. While the review is yet to be done, perhaps I should share a little bit about the Gryphon. The Gryphon for me has somewhat of a U shape, natural ish sound signature, leaning towards a little bit bright at times. It almost shares a similar sound signature to my modded DX160 with refinements on the top end. Let's get started with the sound impression and review of each IMs in no particular order. I did a review on them quite some time ago. Now that it is no longer fresh out of the oven and definitely past its honeymoon phase, this could be an updated review on them. The Tin Hi Fi Dudu's sound signature is somewhat neutral with a lot of planar characteristics. It seems like a lot of people did not really like the Dudu, and I somewhat liked them when I've covered them the first time. This time around, after playing with a lot of planar IMs, I find the Dudu is still just okay. Perhaps a little too fatiguing, lean, and thin, just like in my previous review but I personally still like them. Maybe after trying the T10, I overall prefer them over the Dudu, but for the Dudu, it is still not that bad. The same disclaimer are still applied to them as they are definitely not for the faint of heart, and what you pair the Dudu with is definitely important. I would probably pair them with the Onyx XI1 Alpha and other warmer analog sounding deck arms. What I like most about Dudu is the texturing of bass with them. Since I've already mentioned that RTT10, I should probably talk about them next. The first time I tried them, I found them somewhat off-sounding, but after brain burn-in, the T10 is mostly natural, maybe a little too warm and unsettling, as it is a planar, and you would probably assume that planars would be analytical. It is not as warm and dark as the Leisure S08 I tried a while ago, but it does still come out somewhat warm-ish with surprising technicalities. However, it does have somewhat of a bass boosted, slightly warm-ish tone. The vocal tends to be thick and full-bodied with a slight sparkle. Perhaps I'm skipping a little bit here, but I really like listening to old-school hip-hop and rap with the T10, as the T10 has somewhat of a satisfying bass in both texture and thump. Maybe we will talk about the collaboration I am next. The Zhejian Wu Heidei is a collab between Tang Zhu and Hawaiian Bad Boy or HPB. It is perhaps one of the older planar in this video, as it was released between late 2022 and early 2023. While most of the other IMs are from the late 2023 or 2024, but I'm digressing over here. How do they sound? The Zhejian Wu Heidei is not as dark and perhaps not as warm as the T10, but I think the Zhejian Wu is somewhat a more mature version of the T10, as it has slightly less bass. Perhaps the Heidei is more suitable for those who want less bass than the T10 little less intimate focus, perhaps a little slightly wider sound stage, and a little more engagement in the upper half. 
last but not least, is the MP143 sold by Hilis. I haven't really gotten a chance to try out the MP145, but I got a chance to compare the MP143 to other entries on its price range, which are the Tinhaifei Dudu and the E10 from RT. Unlike the Tinhaifei Dudu, which sounds a little bit thin in the vocals, the 143 is somewhat hollowish. I think I still prefer this over the Dudu, as that hollow sound is somewhat still better than being crushed into oblivion. And the overall sound signature of the MP143 is still somewhat acceptable, especially considering the included nozzles. Switching the nozzles to the silver one works best for me with the MP143. I think the MP143 is an okay IEM compared to all the entries in this video. I overall prefer this over the Tinhaifei Dudu, but I am still wishing that it does not sound as hollow as it is. Perhaps in terms of imaging, they all share a similar performance as they can reproduce the positioning of each instrument rather accurately. However, in terms of sound, I think the Tinhaifei Dudu can be a little sharp, followed by the Zetian Wu Heidei, the MP143, and the RTT10. Personally, for this type of music, I prefer listening to it with the Zetian Wu Heidei. As for the sound staging, the T10 might have the more intimate sound stage, followed by MP143, not far behind. The Tin Hi-Fi Dudu have somewhat of a nicely quiet sound stage. However, the imaging is perhaps the weakest out of all of them, while the Zetian Wu Heidei has both a wide sound stage and a quite nice imaging to them. Starting with the T10, as previously mentioned, I quite enjoy listening to old school rap and hip hop tracks from the likes of BG, NWA, and JZ, as the bass on the T10 is quite nice. Not to forget the weight of male vocals with the T10 suits them rather nicely. I also like how Lofi's new album sounds with the T10. Perhaps the T10 works with a lot of genres but they surely sound great with bass heavy songs. Speaking about Luffy's new album, the Tinai Feduru perhaps also quite nice for that album. However, I still find them lacking in body, but fret not, perhaps they will work better for those who like to listen to metal and maybe guitar covers. Perhaps they are way more suitable for those who like a little more emphasis on the upper mid-range and travel area. The Zetian Wu Heidei, on the other hand, works with almost every genre mentioned so far, and maybe a little bit more. As previously mentioned, perhaps if you like a lot of bass on your hip-hop or any other songs, the Zetian Wu might not be for you, but they surely have a more mature and sophisticated sound to them. I quite like them for orchestral and classical too, as I find them rather natural and clean. I like how forward their mids are, giving a spotlight to the main focus. Last but not least is the MP143 from Hiris. Perhaps just like the Zetian Wu, I think they are quite nice for a lot of genres. I personally like listening to Bring Me The Horizons post-human survival horror with them. Perhaps they are good for all the rock, modern rock, and metal tracks and a little bit of orchestral too. They can be quite the middle ground if you want warmish upper mid-range and treble compared to the Dudu, well, wanting less bass from the Dudu or the Titan. Phew, that was a pretty long review and a pretty long testing time. Thank you for sticking with me to this point. And for those who skipped ahead, welcome, you missed quite a bit there. Personally, out of the four, I like the Zetian Wu Heidei the most. The slightly brightish, sophisticated tuning of the Zetian Wu Heidei is perhaps enough to win my heart over. However, do keep this in mind as the Zetian Wu Heidei is perhaps one of the older IMs in this video. It might be overshadowed by other IMs that are not in this video. And the other Planar Magnetics IM, I haven't tried yet. Next is perhaps the most likely candidate for me to purchase is the RTT10, where the price is quite intriguing. Perhaps 
for most diehard fans of Panel Magnetics, the sound signature of the Titan might sound weird and has lost most of its planar characteristics. But for me, I quite like the Titan. Looking forward to what the Titan Pro brings to the table. I would personally recommend giving them a try as the price to performance ratio for me is quite good. Next is the MB143. Perhaps they are just okay compared to the other three. I honestly got nothing on them other than you should probably try the Titan first and if you like a little bit more energy on the top end then you could probably like the MB143. They are quite nice at the end of the day but for me they are quite overshadowed by the Titan. The Dudu, while offering a classic planar magnetic sound signature, can be quite divisive. Some users including me have found it to be slightly too bright and too thin. While it has its charms, I personally prefer the more balanced and less fatiguing sound of the Titan. As for the ratings, the Zetian Wu Heide gets an A- for tonality and another A- for technicalities. Next is the RTT-10, gets an A- for tonality and a B+, for technicalities. The MB-143 gets a B+, for tonality and another B+, for technicalities. As for the Tin Hai Dudu, it gets a B for tonality and a B+, for technicalities. That is it, that is my first and probably only quadruple review. What do you think? Should I do this again or should I not? Please say no. So, do you own any of the IEMs mentioned? What are your thoughts on them? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you everyone for watching and thank you everyone who has landed me their stuff for review. Have a great day.